Government shutdown that seemed all but certain was uh, avoided over the weekend. And let's say hello and welcome on uh, Mark Alford, Missouri congressman, of course, joining us on KCMO Talk Radio. Mark, good morning. Great to have you on the show. Uh, You guys avoided the shutdown, but it wasn't uh, without a lot of drama. And that includes some Republicans uh, now saying, led by Matt Gates, that they want to remove the Speaker of the House. Good morning. Good morning, Pete. You know, I I think I've said in our previous uh, talks with you and your audience that I was uh, fairly confident that we would not have a shutdown. I think we had the plan in place uh, to avoid that. I I was very happy with the original uh, plan that was uh, uh, really brought about by Byron Donalds and Dusty Johnson, this compromise for a a short term funding bill that would provide uh, up to 30 percent cuts in some cases. Uh, finishing the border wall and paying our military. And I thought that was very important. Unfortunately, that did not pass in the House. We ended up with a a really less conservative uh, short-term funding bill. But nevertheless, we did not shut down. Uh, They did not uh, attach Ukraine funding to it, which I was very happy about. And we're moving forward. And now we have 47 days, Pete, to get our work done and pass these eight remaining appropriation bills. Well, I, this is what I'm confused by. I mean, some of the and it's a very small group of Republicans um, who insisted that, you know, this bill was not up to their standards. We got a worse bill now uh, because of them yes. with no border funding that doesn't nearly have the cuts that you guys had in the original piece of legislation. So they can scream about how they're the real conservatives here. But they're not because the American people got a worse bill as a result. Well, and that was my point all along. We talked last week about this. That was a great short-term funding measure that Kevin McCarthy had uh, that was really uh, negotiated by both the freedom members of the Freedom Caucus and the Main Street Caucus. It was a good deal. But unfortunately, there were five to seven holdouts who said, no way, we are not voting on any what they saw as a continuing resolution, it really wasn't a, a CR. It was something new. It did not continue what we already had as levels of spending. So I think they just shot themselves in the foot, basically. Uh, I think they have a little egg on their face. And, and now Matt Gates is trying to, I think, going to present something today, a, a motion to vacate the chair for Kevin McCarthy. It will not succeed. I think it is a waste of time. We It is a distraction of massive proportions. And we have to concentrate, stay here in Washington and concentrate on getting these funding measures passed, the remaining eight appropriation bills uh, in 47 days. That's not a lot of time. No, it's not. What's the um, uh, what's the conversation around why? Because this is not like the Freedom Caucus against Kevin McCarthy. It's really what four or five people we're talking about. There are some very, very yeah. conservative members of Congress who were on board with the original plan, understanding that there was not a lot of leverage for the Republicans in the House. It's really we're just we're not talking about the Freedom Caucus here. We're talking about four to five members, just to be clear, because you and I both know that there's some people that are going to be screaming about how, you know, everyone's a sellout and Matt Gates is standing up for what's right. But there was never a path for his proposal here to go through. No, there never was. You know, you have Chip Roy uh, voting for the short term funding uh very prestigious members of the the freedom caucus scott perry Mm -hmm. uh it was just a few who who said come hell or high water we will never vote for a continuing resolution and you know i gotta say maybe it was on principle for some i don't think it was on principle for matt gates necessarily i think he has a personal whatever Uh, it's personal between he and kevin mccarthy and i don't want to get into that i don't want to know what's behind that but uh, I think it is now a distraction. Let's get on board. Let's forget about this motion to vacate. He's not going to get 218 unless he does what he claimed Kevin McCarthy did and go after Democrats uh, to get their votes. Uh, Matt Gates would have to do the exact same thing to get this motion to vacate mm-hmm. to succeed. He's going to have to get Democrats on his side, and that's hypocrisy. Well, that I, that was where I was going to go next with this, Mark Alford. I mean, he's – Uh, he's got to get Democrats to back him to oust Speaker McCarthy. And you just don't think he's going to have the votes to get that done? You don't think Democrats are going to do him a favor and cause chaos in the Republican Party? You know, I don't think it's to their benefit because who are they going to get to replace Kevin McCarthy? That's been my stance from the very beginning when 
some folks in my district uh, during the initial speaker vote, they were saying, don't vote for Kevin, uh, vote for Jim Jordan. I'm like, well, Jim Jordan's not running, and he's backing Kevin. I don't see who – this is a very tenuous situation. We have a five-seat majority, and to hold this conference together and get anything meaningful done is almost next to impossible. I don't know of anyone else besides Kevin McCarthy who can do that, who can walk this tightrope, who can juggle all these plates at one time, try to keep as many people – uh, as happy as possible, and let everyone have their say, but not everyone have their way. So let me ask, I, you, you knew I had to ask you about uh, one of your colleagues here, a Democrat from New York, Jamal Bowman, apparently pulling the fire alarm as <laughs> he was getting set to vote. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm back in middle school where, you know, the kid didn't study for the test, so he gets out of it by pulling the fire alarm. What the heck is going on? That's what exactly- is that all about? Well, this guy's kind of a knucklehead anyway. Uh, you know, he's the guy who, outside the House chamber, starts getting into screaming matches in front of the press with just random Republicans walking out, and he'll be shouting them about gun control and all this stuff. I mean, look, I was facing the exact same thing on Saturday morning. Let me show you, tell you how this played out. We had our conference Saturday morning. We determined our course of action that we were going to Uh, put this bill on the floor. Everyone went back to our offices to wait for the buzzer. We have a buzzer that goes off that's very loud that signals a 15-minute warning to get back to the floor. You have 15 minutes to get back to vote. I waited a little longer because I was uh, talking with my staff. I was late in getting back as well. I went down to the normal exits for our building the problem is, is that on weekends, you don't have all these exits and entrances open because a lot of the Capitol Police go home for the weekend. We still have security, but a lot of exits are closed. So I tried three doors and they were I couldn't get out. I didn't pull a freaking fire alarm. I went to the tunnel system one floor down, which is actually a quicker walk over to the Capitol. And this guy could have done the very same thing. He wanted to purposely cause chaos and cause a delay in the vote which other Democrats tried as well because they wanted the Senate bill to pass first. And so there would be $6 billion for Ukraine added to that. That was the strategy behind that. This guy's a former school principal who knew better. And for him to admit that he's that stupid, that he can't tell the fire alarm from an exit button, uh, I would rather just say, you know, hey, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I screwed up. And now he looks like a fool. Yeah. I mean, it is, boy. And he's got to get in line because there's no shortage of those in Washington, D.C. right now, unfortunately. Uh, Mark Alford, of course, one of the good guys. His show, by the way, airs on the weekends on Saturday afternoon at 1 p.m. and Sunday morning at 8.30. Mark Alford's America. And, boy, there's going to be no shortage of content for you on the show in the uh, weeks ahead, Mark. So keep up the great work. And we appreciate you being here on KCMO. Pete, thank you so much. This week on Mark Alford's America, another former morning news anchor named Ashley Henson. She's from Iowa. She's going to be our special guest, and we'll compare notes on what it's like to be a recovering reporter in Congress. <laughs> well, I think there's going to be more of you to come to. It's a, uh, it's a good model. Mark, thanks so much. We'll be listening, my friend. Take care, buddy. All right. Mark Alford on KCMO.